Look, I'm not yawning. I was just going to say, I was I was waiting to see if you would yawn so nope. I could make fun of you. But Which is funny because okay. I am very sleepy, but no. I know. And it's only 7.45. Wow. I Look know. at us. <laughs> so impressed. It's not 10 p.m. It's the bare minimum <laughs> is what we're doing. I mean, that's the that's the vibe of the podcast. Well, that's true. Although, we have fun and exciting updates. We do. Um, the first of which is we have a newsletter. <gasps> Ooh, oh my god! Like an email newsletter. <laughs> it will not go out super frequently because uh, we don't have time. No. But we wanted a way to like have all of our show notes and mm-hmm. things available easily, and so we set up a Substack, um, where we can send out like book recs and updates, and also like random like we have books that we want to. You know, like extra copies of books to give away. So we figured Mm -hmm. that would be a good place to do that. Things like that. So if you would like to subscribe, there will be a link in in with our other links and in the show notes. Um, And of course, we wanted to shout out um, Olivia Random Olive, Mm -hmm. uh, who helped us put it together. She has got a little like newsletter business thing going on. She's still working out like all of the details and how exactly it's going to work. Um, but we will also put a link for that. She's got a, a wait list set up and a little freebie guide right now um, to essentially help anybody who wants to like potentially monetize or otherwise for whatever reason set up an email newsletter. And it's got a, a guide with the, I think, three really main yep. newsletter platforms. Yep. Um, Describing them. Yeah. And that's the, she's got the like freebie guide um that she posted about it like i said we can link that Mm -hmm. um but i at least for us and the thing that she's working on is like a more personalized like looking at your goals and helping you figure out what specifically works for you so she did that for us and it was really really helpful and it looks so Um, professional it looks very nice yeah in grad school um we did indesign for like book production and so every time I see, like, just a really nice designed, like, PDF file, God, it does it for me. Nothing nothing gets you going like a like nicely designed PDF file. <laughs> nothing Ghosts does. and nicely designed PDF files. Meanwhile, if you look in the about section of our sub stack, you will see that our dislikes are, what is it? Yours is balloons and mine is inbox clutter. So, and, I mean, I truly – hate balloons they're my biggest fear if i was stuck in a room with a balloon and i didn't know when it was gonna pop i would go insane like that is truly like i hate them um but then also i have like a million unread emails so i feel like unless you have like a weird balloon kink like i don't (laughs) although (laughs) i would love to read that uh, that balloon balloon animal that would like legit novella be my nightmare i don't doubt it Wow. Wow. I, I just never would have – if you were like, guess what my fear is? Balloons wouldn't be a thing that I would guess yeah. at any point. I know. <laughs> um, but back to the newsletter, it, the, 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 um, the PDF that Olivia sent looked so nice. And we both looked at it. We were like, oh, my God. So. Yes. And it was just very helpful. This was not a – I would not have known how to do this. No. I mean, I, like, a, you could figure it out. But I, like, just – it was so helpful. She had all these suggestions, and I was like, wow. Thank you for just telling us what to do. So, yeah. And then did you – because you were – because she suggested to do, like, a, like a master list of all the books we talked about. And then- yeah. So I set up <laughs> – you text me so like long. we talk about so many books. We talk about so <laughs> many books. So when you if you subscribe to the email when um, you subscribe. In, all right, Boom. relax. Um the Pop. little like there's you know like the welcome email that mm-hmm. it sends. Um and so in that it's got like I think I included links to the bingo boards um mm-hmm. in the drive like downloadable versions of those. Um, a list of like the top five episodes that like if you I mean if you're listening to this you've probably already listened to other episodes um, but if you haven't listened to all of the episodes and you're like oh I wonder which ones are the best ones they're not necessarily the best but they're the ones that I think will give you the best feel mm-hmm. for us um, and then there's a link to a Google spreadsheet 
that is an index of every book that we talk about. It's I think I tried to keep it just to like books that we actually discussed rather yeah. than like we mentioned it as something we wanted to read. Although mm-hmm. I didn't like go back and listen to the episodes. I just looked at the show notes. So there might be some discrepancies. Um, but it's literally an index of all the books we've ever talked about and links to the episodes that they're mentioned in. And so there's like four different tabs. Because there's like historicals, yeah. contemporaries, paranormals, and then like other that aren't romance. Yeah. And there's like I I don't remember how many. It's gotta uh, be an unhinged amount because I was going through and making all the YouTube videos because Olivia also recommended transcripts and stuff. And so mm-hmm. I was like, wait, that's a great idea, but transcripts cost money that <laughs> we don't have. Um so the free option was to create YouTube videos and then it like auto captions them and makes auto transcripts, which is really nice. Um and so I did that over the weekend and I was like copying all the show notes and like pasting them in and I was like, oh my God, how many, <laughs> like 27 episodes and like 2,700 books. We can't be stopped. Yeah, it's, uh, well, so there's 166 in the historical tab nice. currently. I actually, there will be more. a, I, oh no, we already talked about one new tab. Oh. <laughs> it, it's just, it's, there's um many there's many and that's like it's only one like every episode where we talk about a book is all linked in the same so like we mention in which margot halifax earns her talking Mm -hmm. reputation in three different episodes so that's all in one like under margot halifax it lists the three different episodes um and so it really is just 166 different books soon to be more Oh, which is so unhinged because we only have like what twelve something episodes, thirteen, fourteen, somewhere in there. Twenty, twenty-seven. <laughs> oh, I wasn't including the TBR episodes. No, <laughs> which are the culprits, by the way. <laughs> yes, they are. Our last. Every time I got to a TBR, I was like, "Oh no, here's it's a giant list." It really is. Yeah. Oh, the other thing. Well, so the there's the newsletter. The YouTube channel if you are mm-hmm. looking for transcripts. And it can also – in um, like, it has different translations, too. I think you can, like, oh, change – yeah, I think you can, like, change the settings for the videos for, like, a few different languages and stuff. Um, I don't know how accurate that will be for the captions, but – Well, um, hopefully it will be better than yes. nothing. Yes. And then I wanted to shout out – I have to go back and find out who it was because now I cannot – the uh um, remember the but, grocery aisle one <laughs> yeah so i put on our story <laughs> if you listen to last week's episode you will know we discussed what the sexiest aisle in the grocery store is because we were like the the fancy cheese of course <laughs> but then i put on our story why can i not find my screenshot um like a little you know question box mm-hmm. to see what other people thought the sexiest aisle in the grocery store was and someone i'm trying to find my screenshot so i can shout them out actually lady margaret smuddington does say the fruit section and that's a good entry too <laughs> um it's uh the username is what is amelia reading so oh. the spice aisle oh i went to college with amelia oh hi amelia <laughs> hello Thank you for submitting the spice aisle because I saw that and went, I'm the dumbest bitch alive. (laughs) Amelia and I always got confused for each other um, in college because we both um, had the glasses and the bangs thing. Um, And people like come up to us and be like, we were like shouting, like we were like trying to talk to you, but it wasn't because they were saying the wrong name. So we weren't responding and it got us into some tricky situations. Um, That's unfortunate. But yeah. Well, she had a brilliant submission. That I felt ashamed to have not thought of. Obviously, the spice aisle is the sexiest aisle. Not even just because of the like spice, spicy thing, but just because spices are sexy. The smell, you're like, mmm, delicious. It's, it's quite true. And they're all colorful. And like something about it just makes you want to organize. Yeah. You know, you want to get like a spice rack and like organize and like have like um, right. one of the so that twirly when ones. people come over they start ovulating. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Talia Hibbert, she gets it. Um, I do also want to shout out uh, the entry, the jar one, not cans, jars. I don't know what that 
aisle is. I don't know what the jar aisle is, but I believe them. <laughs> Let's just say you guys are very creative. More creative than us, although I, yes. I do still love the fancy cheese. Well, fancy cheese, I mean, what – I mean, well, mine wasn't even – it was craft, so mine wasn't even an entry. It was just <laughs> – It was just where you – It was where I was physically in the Cub Foods. Yeah. Yeah. And there are always, like, employees stocking the shelves when I go, and I'm like, can they hear me? Like, do they know what I'm doing? Mom, I don't know what you did in the cheese aisle. I mean, I was on an elliptical machine in the gym today listening to not the raunchiest of sex scenes or anything but every time i have i have a weird like timing Mm -hmm. every time i go to the gym it seems there's always a sex scene playing in my audiobook and i don't do it intentionally it just keeps happening to me yeah and every time i'm like this is a weird place to be turned on yeah on the elliptical machine on a sunday afternoon when it's just a bunch of old people at the gym as it (sighs) should be well, now that the housekeeping and sexy grocery store aisle <laughs> determining is done, welcome. Welcome. To Romance Your TBR. That is us. I am Hannah. And I am Caroline. That was a long pause. <laughs> I'm just really sleepy. <laughs> As always. I am always sleepy when we record. Well, because, like, who wants to record at, like, a normal time at, like, 3 p.m.? That's like the doing thing time. The doing thing time. <laughs> the doing thing time. <laughs> yeah. 3 p.m. on a Sunday is not my doing things time. No, I was actually officially asleep. I took a nap. <laughs> officially. I was officially asleep. You hung the yeah. sign on the door. You said do yeah. not disturb. Oh my I had um I had a great one from Diana Quincy. She sent me I have that one um, too. Yeah. yeah. I don't know where that ended up. It's probably just in my like bin of book PR stuff. Um, but I used that on my door for a long time, and I reinforced I it with tape one. so that it wouldn't rip. <laughs> I and it was because it was for me. like the best book. It was the best book. Mm-hmm. The Marquis mm-hmm. makes his move. Ugh, so if good. anyone is curious, that's yes. a great book. Um, if you start it and you think to yourself, "I really mm-hmm. don't like infidelity in books," mm-hmm. don't worry. It's I've not never, what you think. It's not, but also I've never rooted so heartily for cheating. And it doesn't even happen. There's no there's no cheating. But I was I was so ready. I was like, yes, queen. Cheat on him. Cut cold That's him. Fair. But That's valid. Yeah. It was That's such fair. a oh my god. There's like a good girl in the bathtub. It's a great book. Well speaking okay. of so good. Uh and we haven't gotten to the topic of the episode. Yeah. Yeah. I mean that that's who we are. Again, if you've made it this far in your journey <laughs> with us, you know. Um, Married by Morning, what a book. the first by Lisa Kleypas to actually reference the title in the book. That's true. I found that so fun for me. It's like, we'll be married by morning. I was like, hi. Ah. I did also. <laughs> I wonder if Lisa got tired of people asking, why do these, why are these titled like this? And she, she finally fine. was like, here. <laughs> I'll be interested in Love in the Afternoon to see if um it makes an appearance. We'll see. This is... The I mean I think again we haven't read the last one or yeah. I haven't you haven't answered no right. no I stopped myself okay well we haven't read the last one but this is the best one I would say so far oh, in yeah. the Hathaways it's um it's one of my favorite Lisa it's like right it's like at the top ish yeah I would put it up it's not quite as high as some other ones but it's it's up there Personally, it's the first one where I was like oh this is a good yeah. this is a Lisa Kleypas. I don't think it can be, like, my favorite because I don't have the audiobook of it. So, like, I can't – like, I won't reread it as much as the other ones that I love, um, which hurts a little bit in my soul. Um, But this is my second time reading it. So I had to read it both times via the physical book. And it got – I mean, I now tapped it. And you can see, like, all those different tabs. Um, It was very fun the second time around as well. So I just took notes. Yeah. Certified Um, reread. I did not Actually, take notes. So I think we should show. shout out some of the funniest notes that I took. <laughs> um, number one is just a quote from, I think, the first chapter. And it's, was this some new level of depravity? Had he developed a spinster fetish? I um I flagged that. And I was like, that would make a lovely <laughs> title of an episode. Um, so new levels of depravity and spinster fetish. Yep. That was one of my tabs. Um, I love that. The next note I took is literally just jinkies. 
because she lost her glasses and had to get down and was looking for them. And all I could think was jinkies. <laughs> jinkies. Belma. Ooh. The next one is, I have a splinter. Has been <laughs> impaled by a piece of timber. I I loved how that happened at like page 43. Like she wasted no time in just you know, yeah. getting rid of the the like my enemy um, talk, and it was immediately just like we're at a chaos. sixteen chaos. It was great. It just really took me out <laughs> that like she can't see, so she's like, "What's wrong with you?" And he's like, "I have a splinter," and she's like, "You're kind of being wimpy right now. Like you should help me." <laughs> and then she was like, "Leah, you have been impaled." Like. He's like, oh, I'll just sit here and nap for a little bit. Once again, all I could think was, it's just, it's just, it's just but a scratch. Just a flesh wound. Just a flesh wound. <laughs> um, all right, hated that for us. Um, <laughs> there are some other that are not funny notes. Uh, no blood light, uh, no bloodletting. Mm. Makes, every time that makes an appearance, I'm like, we know better. We and are leeches. smart. Yeah. No bloodletting, no leeches. Um... <laughs> This is not a direct quote. Actually, I think the last part is, but it's a series of quotes. Mm. And that is, yeah, I can't imagine how rough it must be facing the man who compromised your sister and not attacking him. Oh, wait. Uh, That's different. Poppy was a virgin when I married her. Well, when I seduce a woman, I do it properly. And then then just fist fighting. And then Rutledge is like, okay, that's it. And then pounds. He does. He goes, that's it. I also tab that. That was a great little fight sequence. Um, It hooked mm -hmm. me out. Um, there's a series of crying emojis from when his little surprise was to take her to see an ophthalmologist I know. and get fancy new glasses. I know. Like, how hot. I just It was want. the sexiest thing I've ever read. Like, and he was like, add the little, like, filigree, like, make him look sexy. Like He said, and I quote, I would never put a masterpiece <sighs> in an ordinary frame. I know. And that, that ended my life. Um... I know. He's Leo. He's just. <laughs> I was like, oh my god, not you getting her glasses. Um, he... the next quote immediately following that beautiful quote, by the way, or note rather, not quote. So you have the gorgeous quote. I would never put a masterpiece in an ordinary frame. Very next note is uh, toe sucking sauce. Oh this yeah. Is, this is because there's like one throwaway mention of Thanks. him sucking on her toes, and I have a a delightful image of like. <laughs> like photoshopped like a hot sauce bottle but it says toe sucking oh. sauce on the label like and that I, exists or like no i think you somebody just thought i of hope it. i hope it doesn't no i mean like the picture exists but i think it's photoshopped okay. well yeah a bottle okay. of toe sucking sauce i don't because it, it's like finger looking thing. good is that i don't know kind of okay i don't know i just know that it exists when i studied abroad for some reason there was this running bit that we all made fun of one guy for having <laughs> What fetish he didn't that we know of Not i don't to i Lorraine don't he wasn't level. no well he wasn't my friend so like i don't know how the bit came about mm-hmm. but i know that it immediately spread to the entire study abroad group mm-hmm. so in the group chat we were just constantly making fun of him for having a foot fetish i don't know why i don't know why but i do remember somebody sent the toe sucking sauce image <laughs> i saved it and so that was all i could think of well, I think that would be a great bit for all of Lorraine Heath's heroes to be in a group chat and they're each making fun of each other for having a toe fetish and then they each have a toe fetish but they're each like thinking they don't because every time her delicate toes oh Christ oh Christ (laughs) yeah it just she's not the only one no no there was one book that I just read he was like her plump little toes and fingers I was like oh and he said it multiple times interesting Mm-hmm. There was a Samara Parish where there was like a brief met. There was like one toes mention peeping of out of the nightgown. No, I think he like woke up from a dream, like a sensual dream. Yeah, and it was about her toes or something like that. Where I was like, <laughs> was about okay, toes. Well, well, yeah, because like, her there's toes a- made an appearance. Well, because like always, like in the middle of the night, if the heroine like arrives, her delicate toes are peeking out from beneath of the the nightgown, and I they're immediately it aroused. As like a like they would never see it's like the ankle you know it's like right. the ankle like it's arousing thing. because yeah. it's always covered it's up. just funny because it's toes <laughs> yeah it just makes me laugh every time and so it's like leo sucked on her toes for a little while and i'm like mm-hmm. all right king good for you 
Get you some toe sucking sauce. <laughs> okay, I have two more notes. The first one is if I marry her, I'll have to buy an- uh, her, the other woman. If mm-hmm. I marry her, mm-hmm. I'll have to buy another special license. And Marx's immediate response of, I hope it's expensive. <laughs> He's like, it is. I loved me. that little scene where she was like jealous. Oh, she was so mad. Yeah. And then like her, like the the words that Claypus wrote about like her like angry like sigh of relief and like how she was just so happy that he wasn't getting married to her. Ugh. Okay. I loved it. And then the very last note that I took while reading this book is Leo is so real for his pregnant Catherine kink. <laughs> I loved that. When I first read it, I was like, whoa. Oh. Oh, I love whoa. a pregnancy kink from a hero. Yeah. It was real well, hot. He's just and like, then the really epilogue, into it. I was I was really into it. Mm-hmm. That was cute. That was a cute. That was a really good one. And I was like, "Wait, are there going to be twins?" And then there were because you knew. Nah, I know they could not have a boy. Nah, I know. Do <laughs> any of do we know? Do any of these children end up in the um the Ravenel series? I haven't recognized any names. Yeah, which doesn't mean they don't. Yeah, like in passing. Um, and if I haven't knows, just, like forgotten. Let us I don't know. I was curious. So, though. I wonder if she'll ever do something with them. But people haven't, like, heard they... from her since, like, 2021, so I'm not quite yeah, sure what's, going, what's on. going on. Um, I don't think so. Yeah. I feel like I, I would remember reading about it. I haven't recognized any of the names. With the, like, Romani Association, I feel like mm-hmm. that would have been a notable thing. Yeah. I get the sense that the Hathaways are just hanging out in Ramsey House, living their best life. True. With all their weird little animals. Dodger. King. Dodger. He's so cute. He's so cute. Stealing her garters. Bye. I love him. Me too, King. Ugh. This book was just so cute. Like, it was. It was, it just, I just loved the progression of it. Like, it's just started, like, the pacing was really good. You know, it just started mm-hmm. off, like I said, like, page 40. Like, they were getting into a filthy pit so whenever a filthy pit's involved you know it's gonna be a good time (laughs) i mean fair enough i suppose i did also like the uh the little parallel opium moments yeah Yeah. i thought that was a nice i do (laughs) i will say the twist kind of made no sense i was I was at first angry, but then when all the prostitutes were, like, cajoling him into saying <laughs> she loved her, I was like, okay, I buy it. I was like, okay, I'm fine. It's just, and I then, felt like it was kind of a week. It it was at first for me, but then when the aunt was like, um, my brother never came for me, and, like, it kind of, like, tied it all back to how um, she was, like, forced into that, and, like, the brother never cared, but then um, Kat had Harry to save her um both times and like that to me was touching ish i yeah i mean i didn't need that to happen but in the scope of what could have happened knowing lisa clapis oh sure i was okay with it because like it just ended up being cute (laughs) i wasn't like mad i was kind of like i roll at the the whole ants like you're gonna suffer because i suffered and i want i want to turn you into me was the whole like reasoning and i get that she was like and truthfully crazy my eyes did done skim right over that. Um, yeah, I just kind of rolled like my a, eyes and was like, yeah. "This is not a, this is a dumb yeah. reason." But I didn't care because I was yeah. having a good time. That's what. Yeah, like, could it have been different? Yeah, but I sure did love the sight of the prostitutes just <laughs> cajoling him on. I also do love both Harry and Leo just losing mm-hmm. their minds. I thought that was so sexy of them. Mm-hmm. I just love how there were like two kidnappings. In two books, right in a row. Why not? You um, know. why not take a crazy chance? Why not? Lisa Clippers loves a kidnap. Get kidnapped by your aunt. You know, she loves a kidnapping. <sighs> yeah. Um, Rip William, I wanted better for him. Uh, I know. But shout out to Dodger mm-hmm. for not kicking the bucket. <laughs> that was another thing. That and for leaving out. the blood trail. <laughs> it was- uh, when Leo said something about like you're gonna wake up every day for the rest of your life next to someone who loves you, and she was like, "Dodger, <laughs> bye." Me too. God. Um, Dodger, I, it Dodger just, is so cute. 
ferrets. I don't even like ferrets. I think they're gross. Well, I, yeah, I have but no they're adorable. Real opinion on a ferret. I don't think I would trust one. I've just heard they're really gross. Yeah, but, they're smelly. But TikTok having the algorithm that it does... As soon as I finished that book, of course I got a video from somebody who has like five ferrets of them like oh giving gosh. them a plastic bag to play with or a paper bag rather not plastic and they were mm-hmm. adorable. The mental image of his little like when he does his little sideways hopping yeah. victory dance is the funniest thing in the entire world. Well, my favorite is when he's like passed out on her lap like upside down like his mouth mm-hmm. just open. I was like, oh, yeah, that's real cute. And Leo's like, me too, Dodger. <laughs> her lap looks like the comfiest place to be. <laughs> Mm. Uh, it was like because you got his 16 and you kind of got like her like opium hangover mm-hmm. situation um, where he just like kept giving her orgasms to get her through it oh my god I was like is this re- like is this based in anything <laughs> like is that actually like a an effect of coming down from well opium? I think Clapus took the word frustration and went with it <laughs> I mean, I respect it. Yeah. I just was like, is this a real thing? Or was yeah. Lisa Claypas just like, you know what would be fun? <laughs> is if she essentially was like, you know, those sex pollen fanfics? It was like that. But do you not know what I'm talking about? No, I don't. Okay. I never read Sometimes fanfic. there's a fanfic where, I mean, I'm sure, I assume it's happened in actual fiction, but I've only encountered it <laughs> in fan fiction where like there's some kind of sex pollen they run into it for some reason and they're like so horny. it's like an aphrodisiac okay but, like, so like an a- okay usually with a sex pollen it'll be like painful if they don't do something about it oh. like really painful cramps or something and so they're mm-hmm. like oh no we have to have sex or else you're gonna be in immense pain <laughs> there was a there's a sophie jordan um the virgin and the mm-hmm. rogue it's the aphrodisiac and they were actually in physical pain like because she took this like potion her sister made for period cramps and then she was like, she thought she was dying because she hurt so much after taking the potion. And then she was just really horny. And then just sure. like jumped on the the guy who was in the brother's study. And she just Believable. like rode him. <laughs> he was like, what's happening? In the yeah. uh, the Laura Kinsale that I'm reading, the Midsummer Moon, this yeah. book is bonkers. It's also from 1987. So there's like, things are going wild. You would appreciate there's a brief amnesia. Amazing. Um, but within the second chapter, <laughs> I don't know how to explain. It takes so long to explain the setup of this book, but you have to understand that from the get-go, it's bonkers. She's this, like, mad scientist, essentially. Like, mm. she's super scattered. Um, mm-hmm. You could probably argue for some kind of, like, neurodivergence, but I don't know enough about it. So she's, mm-hmm. like, very scattered, super, like, hyper-focused on her work and is always jumping from one thing to another, really bad at reading, like, social cues. Or, like, paying attention to what's going on in the real world. Also super sheltered, raised by, like, an eccentric uncle. No knowledge of the world or I love body, eccentric relations. Anything like that. And he's yeah. a duke who's <laughs> sent to go find this inventor because somebody sent him a message and was murdered on the way there and was oh. like, this inventor, <laughs> Merlin, has invented essentially a walkie-talkie is basically what it boils down to and he needs that for the war against napoleon so he goes and he shows Naturally. up at the door and this woman answers the door and he's like i'm here to see mr merlin lamborn and she after a very long conversation where she is completely scattered and writing mm-hmm. things down and there's a hedgehog in her pocket and just absolute and chaos ensues she's like there is no mr merlin lamborn and he's like did he die and she's like no i'm merlin lamborn mm. And she Classic. doesn't know what invention he's talking about because she's trying to build a flying machine. It's a whole thing. And it takes so long and he is so exasperated. And he's so honorable and buttoned up. But then they have dinner. And the thing is that he is like, you don't know anything about anything. And you're just living here alone with these two elderly servants, essentially. And you really need, like, a chaperone or a protector because what if someone took advantage of you? And she's like, how would anyone take advantage of me? Like, she literally knows nothing. <laughs> And then he's like, do you have salt? And she, like, digs around in this cabinet and finds salt that's, like, labeled <laughs> yeah. with the, like, yeah. NACL. And he tastes it. And he's like, yeah, okay, I guess that's salt. And so he eats a ton of it. And then he's high out of his mind. And they never talk about what, but it's just like, oh, no, something was – some kind of aphrodisiac was in the salt. You never know what it was. But for some reason, he was high out of his mind. So by the end of the second chapter, they had already had sex a couple of times, which she doesn't know <laughs> oh what my. that is. 
he just like oh seduces her and is like, I love you so much. And she's like, all right, this <laughs> this feels good. And then it wears off and he's like, oh, dear God, there was something in the salt and now I have to marry her. <laughs> okay, I may have to dabble in that book. That sounds... It's also narrated by Nicholas Bolton um, and he's so sexy. Anyway, <laughs> I listen, wild. I've got a couple hours left in the audiobook. We just got past the amnesia. Wow. There's a that flying machine. Like a There's multiple kidnapping attempts. We do love that. And uh, I, I completely missed the hedgehog on the cover the first time. Yeah, I there saw is it. a fun little hedgehog. Mm-hmm. The hedgehog is so goddamn funny. I just I don't that voice at the <laughs> I mean it was just like one little passing bit that he did for the hedgehog. Which like made funny. sense in context because he was like mm, mm. this annoying little hedgehog. But it really t- – he grows to really like the hedgehog. Or, like, mm-hmm. he never says it. Well, at one point, it does really fuck up his finger. It, like, curls up around him. And there's, like, this entire long scene where he's, like, in agony. Anyway. Relatable. I love long uh, scenes where men are in agony. It truly- true and relatable. <laughs> it lives This one the was really right good. But also there's a scene where he, like, he's exhausted and he comes back from his little trip and he opens his stationary box and the hedgehog is inside. And he just starts talking to the hedgehog. And she does that thing, you know, like, where it'll be, like, a long passage of dialogue and they never tell you what the person is doing, but you can tell from the dialogue. So she has this whole paragraph where he's talking to the hedgehog and he's like, oh, hello. Well, thank you. My trip was very nice. Thank you for asking. Oh, well, the roads were pretty rough. I wrote this petition to the commissioner. Oh, would you like to sign it? Well, there you go. Put your little paw in the inkwell there. (laughs) And, uh, uh, then, oh, here's my secretary. He'll have a, a, a handkerchief to clean you up. And the secretary is like, are you really, like, are you tired? And he's like, no, why would you ask? And it took me out. Can you imagine getting a petition and there's a tiny little hedgehog friend? Uh, that's like a love letter for me. It's a declaration oh. of intent to marry. Oh, it was the cutest thing I've ever read. Anyway, this is not relevant. Well, there's... <laughs> Why are we here? (laughs) Aphrodisiac. (laughs) Why are we talking about aphrodisiac? Which is like semi related to the opium in this. Oh. (laughs) Um, Our broad uh, six degrees have come back into play here. This is why our index of books that we talk about is like hundreds of books. (sighs) Because there's always connections. Um, Yeah, I just. Leo really just mm-hmm. I loved his progression <laughs> from book one to this one and then mm-hmm. he even had like more of a glow up in this one like he had to because he was like so like hot for her that he had to like physically exhaust himself with manual labor okay. and then he got even more fit and muscular because of it um Again, the prototype for good old West Daddy Ravenel. Mm. <laughs> but West is like good. It's a yeah. West he is like a more wholesome version. You of didn't Leo. dislike him like you disliked Leo in book one. Yeah, but yeah. I mean, even like post glow up, Leo is like he's still kind of a rake. Like he's not sleeping yeah. around, but he's the kind of like yeah. insouciant. Like. Mm-hmm. You're right. West Level is more of a hair. cinnamon rolly. West turns into a true family man. Yeah. And technically, just your technically, cousin. there is a movie called The Family Man by Nic- uh, Nicholas Cage is in it. So Six Degrees of Nicholas Cage. <sighs> How do we keep doing this? <laughs> we got there, guys. I know you were worried, but every time we make this Six Degrees of Nicholas Cage, <laughs> separate whatever. Um, just imagine y- you. As have you seen the like TikTok meme of Nicolas Cage and Pedro Pascal? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> From the Pedro Nicolas Pascal, <laughs> I am. You're just <laughs> just going off grinning. Joy ride. I am offended. <sighs> <laughs> anyway, <laughs> we have to have a Nicolas Cage tax jar now. Oh, not another jar. <laughs> <laughs> Got so many jars. Um, Leo. Also, Leo. Catherine, I saw a review that was like a like a three star review on Goodreads where somebody was like, I just didn't feel like she had like a really fleshed out backstory. And I was like, huh? Well, being sold for prostitution 
at by 15. your family at 15 yeah i mean that'll do it to you that seemed like a pretty fleshed out backstory to yeah. me personally um the plot and twist I was thought a little she silly was... but the backstory itself yeah the plot but like i thought um throughout the series too like ever since um because it was book two because uh she was there mm-hmm. when Wynn and um, Ke- or Wynn and Leo yeah, duh, Kev. went to oh. went to right. France, and then right. they brought in um, Catherine during that time. So, like, basically in book three, you really started to see um, her, and I just I liked um, the contrast in their character types and how Leo just always was like, "She's so buttoned up, but I want to make her scream by edging." And edging like he no was other. so real for that. <laughs> it worked so well. That's one of my favorite like micro tropes. Yeah, is when they're like, "I hate her so much. I want to yeah. make her beg me yeah. for mercy." Like, <laughs> I cannot. You need to get uh, back on your immortals after you dark get? because um, <sighs> the edging like no other in the kiss of a demon king or whatever that's oh, called. Yeah. Uh, you're like the fact that you haven't read that yet is mildly alarming that book was so good and that's truly like i hate you so much because you have kidnapped me and chained me to a bed um but now i have broken free and i have chained you to a bed and i'm now going to edge you (laughs) and it was so good Mm. yeah yep that rydstrom and sabine they're the real ones in this life um leo right up there (laughs) Okay, well, he did not do that much. No. no, but he did draw her naked. And then she found he him. Did. And he did. Like, <laughs> I'll admit, I probably would have had a different response. Where yeah. She was just kind of uncomfortable and was like, maybe destroy those. I think that would have freaked me out a little bit more. Yeah. But it was Again, not. So fiction. Yeah. I'm not mad about it. No. I thought it was hilarious that he was just like, that's what the pen tells me. I'm like, sir. Um, okay, Leo. Mm. And meanwhile, he's like, I hate her so much. She's the worst. She's my nemesis. <laughs> my enemy. Okay, Leo. Ugh. His arch enemy. So I funny. underlined that quote, too, when he was like, how can it be that my, like, arch enemy, my something or another, is now this or that? And he's just so in love. Have I developed a spinster fetish? <laughs> that killed me. It really did. Uh, I oh just... my god, Leo is so funny. Really through was... all of the well, two through yeah. this one. Yeah. And I was like, again, we talked about it in our um mind mind to midnight. Um, how like he was definitely frustrating, but you knew why why so it was better but yeah i was not a fan of him for that book so i'm really happy we got here to where he is just the epitome of uh so good the glasses thing really did take me out oh lisa (laughs) oh lisa how did you know and there was like face sitting or face kneeling that was fun yeah i liked it always Kind of cracks me up when Lisa will throw in like various, like out of the ordinary sex yeah. acts, I guess. But she never goes into detail. No, it's like you like could just vague... say she sat on his face. It's okay to say that. No, I think it's actually kind of funny. <laughs> She's well, like, I... you don't need to get into detail. You know what's going on. <laughs> I'm like, do I? Because in my head, I'm trying to position these characters yeah. to figure out what's happening. I never <laughs> trust myself. So I need to like I need to know what's happening to them. So like I need to know like where things are, and then if it's like vague, I'm like I don't know what's happening. It, it's I need to get the Barbie dolls out. <sighs> yeah, it's rough out here. Mm-hmm. Again, like mm, I don't. I'm thinking about Dodger again. <laughs> right after. Okay. <laughs> um. Okay. Not those two things weren't tied together. <laughs> I just love Dodger. <laughs> cool. He was really good. He was he was a well, cutie. Well, also, B, 
well, Beatrice wasn't in this book as much, but, like, no. somebody mentioned in passing that she was like, oh, yeah, well, Beatrice always says you two were, like, are, like, ferrets. Yeah. Just a little Beatrice rough and tumble. Beatrice thinks that of love. people as animals. Yeah. She's yeah. like, well, you're both ferrets. <laughs> I I'm so intrigued by her book because I read the like teaser chapter and lo and behold the hero has a dog that he is unhappy that he's attached to that he met in the war so I'm assuming the dog will come back and so I said in a previous episode that I'm assuming the her- the hero is gonna like either be like opposed to animals or have like something going on there to be like her opposite so that'll be an interesting one because um because you know it's like epistolary and like she's pretending to be someone else um writing him letters. Yes. Yeah. Okay. I keep forgetting because I have heard that plot record yeah. like that like people will be like, oh, this is the book where she is like mm-hmm. she takes over writing the letters, etc. But then I always forget what book it is. Mm-hmm. I'll be like, what? What? What book is that where she's doing yeah. that? And then I keep going, oh, it's the last yeah. Hathaway's book, and then forgetting again. So I think in that one it'll be when he finds out that it's her because like she like took over writing this these letters like immediately for this friend that he because he was like courting her friend um Mm -hmm. and this is all in like the chapter one the teaser um and then the friend like doesn't want his moping about being at war she's like it's not interesting enough so beatrix is like i think you should respond to him he seems a little bit sad um and then gives him advice on this dog that he's found um i'm intrigued by the book let's just say that we'll see where it goes (laughs) Because I could, I can see like two different diverging ways how the plot would fold, like unfold. Um, if he like finds out right away and is like angry at her, like when a Scott ties a knot by Tessa Dare. Um, like that's not like a pistolary one, or was it? She was like writing to him, or like yeah. she was like writing fake letters to him. Yeah, <laughs> then he kept getting them. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I mean, it's Lisa Kleypas, so yeah. the thing is that even if you think to yourself, this is how the po- – I mean, it might. Yeah. But you also might get two kidnappings and an opium <laughs> That dosage. is very true. <laughs> you that just don't know. True. I just want some cute, angry hero at dog moments and canine <laughs> bonding. <laughs> really, I I'm just excited. want quirky animals. Yes. That's and my favorite Medusa thing. was already mentioned twice. Oh, hell yeah. Yeah. Medusa's my girl. Yeah. <laughs> so, mm. oh my God. And then there was like the overheard like Pride and Prejudice insult moment where he called her plain and like weird. Um, and she like overheard him saying that to his friend. I, I love that like little micro trope. I love a good overheard insult. <laughs> mm. <laughs> so there's that. Um. Again, like, summing up my thoughts about this book is hard because it was just, like, vibes, you know? Yeah, I don't know that, like, I mean, I did think the pacing was good, but I couldn't yeah. give you, like, critiques on it because I was just vibing the whole time. That's why I I had to read it over again because when you posted about the splinter, I was like, I fully forgot that that happened. And, like, I loved when it happened. I just completely forgot about it. Because it happens really early on. Yeah, so I had to reread. <laughs> um, And I was, like, trying to – I was like, do I – even still, like, could I talk about this book? Like, it's I finished, just like, vibes. An hour ago. It's yeah, just it really is. Leo it, like, and Kat. They, like, make out. Like, and bickering, but also making out. Yeah, that's, like, the end of book three when you, like, they're like, we should talk about what happened. You're like, what happened? And then Leo that spends scene. a lot of time trying to convince her to marry him. Yes, I do love the repeated proposal. Tosh, Dick. Yeah. And he was like, how many proposals is this? And he's like, or she was she like it's this mount or no he was like it's like four or five, and then mm-hmm. um, she was like no the one, the one when I was like high on opium didn't really count. <laughs> she said you didn't ask me to marry you that was you asking me to come back and off the roof, <laughs> that doesn't count. Um, but yeah, I thought that was just a really cute. I mean, they were just so cute. Again, there wasn't much angst. The angstiest part was the kidnapping, but again, it was well, made I mean, funny. There was but... a lot of angst, but it was external angst. Yeah, yeah. It was like, ah, uh, what is in your past? And she was yeah. like, being well, sold as a prostitute <laughs> at fifteen. And he was like, uh oh. And then um, the catalyst of his story was that um, there was some weird will that um, if he didn't get married 
by a certain time Aww. frame and he didn't have an heir, the house would go to this Countess Ramsay and her daughter who was pregnant and yeah, looking this for house a fast. Yeah, because wasn't entailed. Yeah, so he had to get married by morning um, and get an heir. And then that – they were yeah, like, you, you should – year. Yeah. So then – well, because, you know, gestation. We got nine months, so it's kind of yeah. fast. Um, and so – it was like the catalyst was they had to like hold a ball and then she was stressed and she was like dyeing her hair. And then he pours a whole thing of water on her head I when she was trying mind. to dye her hair. He was like, no. I love when a hero just like loses his mind and everyone yeah. around him is like, yeah. why is this the thing? So yeah. him like busting open the door <laughs> and her being like, what are you doing? And then him holding her down and mm-hmm. dumping water on her and then- head. Meanwhile, everyone outside of the room is terrified that he's just, like, <laughs> railing on like, her. Oh, dear God. What and then he doing? starts to, like, they start to, like, make out and he starts to <laughs> fondle her. And then Cam's he's at cute. the door. And he's like, if you enter, you will die. And Cam's like, oh, shit. Cam is so funny every time he shows up. <laughs> mm-hmm. Because nothing ruffles him. Yeah. And in the Hathaways... There are so many a funny contrast because it's yeah. just him at the door being like, "Leo, can you come outside, please? I would like to talk to you." Meanwhile, Leo, Leo meanwhile, has his hands up her skirt <laughs> after dumping water on her. So the carpet's like all wet. Oh, and she's crying because yeah. he pinned her wrists, and she yeah. was like, "Please don't do that." And he was like, mm-hmm. "Hang on, let me make out with you." Because <laughs> he was like, "Darling, I would never." Yeah, it was very fun. I mean, there was yeah, the was one so time when um when he she rejected his proposal for like the third time, and he's like, "Fine, then I'm not having sex with you." And he was like teasing her, and then he like walked away, and she's like, "What?" <laughs> he's like, "No, next time I'm getting you pregnant, so <laughs> we can't do it until you agree." <laughs> Just saying. He's like, I'm feeling very vir- like viral right now. Like, I'm pretty potent. Not so, like, viral. I will get you <laughs> viral. I'm like, pretty sure that I will get you pregnant. So, we got to just like hold the horses. I like that, that mentality time. so much. Mm-hmm. He's like, mm, <laughs> I, this is about our swimmers. I can tell. <laughs> <laughs> this is magic sperm that I can get behind. This is like just willful sperm. <laughs> Just so ready. Uh, Except ready, swim. set, go. Uh, <laughs> Olympic athletes up in those um, vast friends. <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, I don't want to think about oh. Larry. <laughs> Leo's Harry sacks of prunes. That's what I meant to say, not Larry. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, you can tell we're hitting the hour mark because we have nothing <laughs> interesting left to say. It's just <laughs> we're just back dope. to Elizabeth Hoyt. <laughs> when in doubt, bring out an Elizabeth Hoyt metaphor, or don't, <laughs> or don't, but do. Um, yeah, that's all I've got. Yeah, I have no like criticism. Very, it's just vibes. It feels like a very underwhelming episode for a book that was very whelming. Um, <laughs> I don't, I don't know how to, like, convey uh, that it was just so much fun. Well, this is why I started by listing my notes. Because so this right. is all I've got. Like, <laughs> yeah. Um. Well, when I did, seduce did a woman, I do it properly. And then a fist fight. <laughs> and, then, and there were a few good girls. I liked that. Um, one. When she was high off of opium and he was like, please don't fall off this ledge of this roof. And then one when he wanted her to grind on him. So one sexy and one (laughs) life-threatening good girl moment in this book, which it's Lisa Kleypas. So you should expect that. I have like butchered her name. Like I was like Lipa. I've like called her Lika. Like I can't. Talking is so hard right now. Relatable. (laughs) Okay. It's only the the one thing that we have to do. Oh, 
listeners, I have failed you. <laughs> I can't do it, I promise. Talk. Oh. I'm not good at reading books and talking about them anymore. Okay. Never. Never. That's it. That's all she wrote. That really is. Well, it there's just... actually one more book and then a whole series, but you That's know. so true. <laughs> <laughs> I'm That's... I'm excited. I'm going to like fight the urge to read it cuz I have so many arcs to freaking read that I really don't have the time to read Love in the Afternoon early. But boy do I want to. My neck alley shelf haunts me in the middle of the night. I'm at like a 93% rating right now. Or me, I'm at like I'm at 92 and I've got like so many outstanding ones and I'm like please take me down. It hurts. I just like got into like a requesting spiral and then they all came through. Yeah, I've managed to avoid that thankfully, but I Ugh. still have a few left. Oh my god. I have and so then many. I have right now I just have other like book club and other various yeah. like books that I need to read for that our, and for myself. Yeah, because we've got our lucky our March episode or March, uh St. Patrick's Day. Indeed. Got a few to read for that. Will um, that be next week? The seventh. Sure will be. So by the time this comes out, that'll be our next episode. Oh my god. Well, we'll have a TBR yeah. Tuesday on the fourteenth. And then right, the but I mean, episode, yeah, the next Friday will be St. Patrick's. So if you're, Day. if you want to know, we are reading books with Lucky in the title. So like, the lady gets lucky. Um, luck be a lady by Meredith Duran, stuff like that. Um, some Dukes Indeed. have all the luck. Christina Britton. I am tackling um, the luckiest lady in London. I think that's nice. I have the audiobook for that, so I should be doing it soon. Nice. I have a whole series by um Jana McGregor. She's got all the books we found out have luck in the title, mm-hmm. so. Or at least the first few. They, well, yeah, the first. There are, like, three of them. Um, so that's our plan. And hopefully this next TV – I haven't been reading a lot, so hopefully this next TBR Tuesday can, like, be a normal <laughs> um, hinged amount, not well, unhinged. when we don't have to cover an entire month in one episode due to our own poor planning, I that get- usually goes better. That was so many books. That episode was so long. Our our only other longest one was our Midnight's episode. Yeah. Well, shout out to whoever it was that shared our like episode and was like, yes, yeah, an almost two hour episode. So I was like, I did that? Yeah, you didn't. Okay. Well, they shared it to the story and now I can't remember who it was. So if you're listening and you're like, that was me, um, just know that I saw that and I was like, I'm so glad that you're excited because we I did feel it for a little you. bad every time we do it. <laughs> Well, that's why I started adding in the timestamps because I was like, yeah. for the people who are like, please, just for the love of God, talk about the book that you promised. We have given you the timestamps. And I know you're there because my mom is that person. Not about yeah. us, but I used to put on um, – there was this like Catholic podcast we used to listen to, which sounds mm-hmm. super lame, but it was actually a pretty interesting podcast. Mm-hmm. Um, but it was these like priests <laughs> who were friends. <laughs> um, and so they they would do the same Two thing where they like – being dudes. <laughs> they were actually kind of fun. Um but uh, they they would also banter for the first like I think they mm. actually had like a little timer. They'd be like our fifteen minutes for banter. We should is up. get it. We should get a timer. Probably, but that's not as fun and chaotic. True. Um, okay. And so I would like listen to these episodes with my mom, and she was interested in like the theology. Yeah. And, like, not that the banter. Stuff. And so I would be vibing with the banter, hearing these priests talk about like yeah. their godchildren and ski trips and stuff. And my mom was like, "Why are they talking about random stuff?" And I was like, "Well, yeah. if you like listen regularly, you like." I don't know them and like want to know mm-hmm. what's going on in their life. And she was like not having it. She didn't care. So I would always have to skip the intro because she did not care about their personal lives. <laughs> I will say for us that we have a weird ability to normally bring it around back around to books. You know, we'll find we can bring a way. it around town. <laughs> It'll come back. Bring it around town. town. Yeah, the bubble episode. That's I a used great one. to. um. This is not related to books, but it is related to Spongebob bringing it around town. (laughs) When I was in band, marching band in high school, Mm -hmm. I had certain friends that we had like pre-show rituals where like Mm. I would go do a handshake with this person and go do like like little bits with different people before every show. I don't really know why, but it was a good time. And with one girl who was the year above me, I don't remember why this was the thing that we would do, but we would bring it around town. That was our like (laughs) – 
pre-marching band show ritual and we would do the full like (laughs) circle our hips and we would be obnoxious about it and bring it around town and i'm sure the other people who were watching us do that were like what is why what is wrong with you but i had a good time he does i am lll at all times living like larry i think about living like larry 24-7. Twenty four seven. Yeah. Do you? I mean, my my living like Larry is just reading romance books. <laughs> um, I don't know that that's what Larry is doing. <laughs> well, my version of Larry. Yeah, no, Larry, Larry is uh, preventing SpongeBob from getting sun bleached. Oh, Larry me by. <laughs> Let's stop. <laughs> Larry, Larry by morning. By morning. <laughs> I, I'm sorry. Living like Leo. Yep, Sam. Uh, none of these bits are funny. I think I'm just We brought really it tired. back to the books. Boom. Pop if you're into balloons. In, don't say into like like it's a fetish. Some people there's a Bob's Burgers episode where Linda's parents, her father has a weird balloon fetish. Oh. I don't I don't want to say weird. If it's your thing, it's your thing. It's no, sure I'll not say my weird. thing though. Okay. It's weird if you have a balloon fetish. I'm so sorry. <laughs> he loved them popping, which I thought was just so horrifying. <laughs> yeah. So that was a good episode. Well, <laughs> I'm gonna weird is... I'm gonna read the weird balloon erotic novella. Thank God. Just to report back to you. I'm sure I it's look terrible. To it. The only thing I, I remember not... from seeing someone review it was that there was weird stuff about like are they children because like they were just born what? i don't That's really want to read it <laughs> <laughs> but i but i do want to know you're you're taking one for the that's team. how i end up in trouble that's how i yeah. end up reading where hedgehog erotica because i'm like i just want to know i want to know that song has been stuck in my head since we recorded i've listened to so much disney music it's unreal well, I've been listening to show tunes twenty four seven, so okay, not so that we're, far off. We're different um, edges of the same coin, or whatever. Um, different I sides of the same sides, coin. Edgings on the brain, um, isn't it always? <laughs> I was listening to uh, "Won't Say I'm in Love," you know, from Hercules, and I thought that was a classic, a, a song that kind of fit this book's vibe. Big Catherine Marks energy, right? Yeah, also Leah. I, I kind of felt like it. It worked. So yeah, that is their vibe. That's my Disney sign off. That's a banger of a song. I would also apply people will say we're in love from Oklahoma. Ooh, okay. So he, look at us. Specifically Oklahoma the 2019 cast edition. The classic is fine, but the 2019. Gotcha. <sighs> but yeah, our playlist is straight up two songs. <laughs> one from Disney and one from Show Tunes. So one from show tunes. <laughs> so, one from a musical? Yes. <laughs> it just, <laughs> I don't it's know. just funny. Um, um, so yeah, listen to those. Listen to us and read this book. Well, hopefully you've already read this book because we have spoiled it. So you should know that And if by you now. haven't read it yet, you should probably read the other few books first. Yes. Yes. For the Leo glow up. It's good. It's a good one. Um... Well, that's all. Ta ta for now. To quote someone in Winnie the Pooh, I think. Oh, if it's, you say so. It's someone. I believe you. You could say Thank literally you. anything, and I would be like, "Yeah, that sounds right." Thank you so much, because I always doubt myself. <laughs> okay. Um. Yeah. Bye-bye. Bye bye. Bye.